Ni hao, or hello. My name is Eric Magidson, and I am a graduate of the Concordia University Master's in Business Administration program. During this brief presentation, I want to provide for you an overview of the China experience from the educational standpoint. So let's look at the educational value and benefits that the program provided for me and what I hope will compel you to also participate. Briefly, I want to introduce MBA 587, Asian Business, and MBA 588, International Consulting. During the MBA 588 class, you have the unique opportunity to travel to Suzhou, China, and become a student at Suzhou University while also completing a consulting project with what most likely will be a multinational company. Finally, I want to leave you with just a few pictures that continue to remind me of my experience on the Suzhou University campus. So MBA 587 is your traditional MBA course that utilizes Harvard case studies for you to get a foundation and an understanding of China. You'll focus on practical issues encountered by U.S. managers doing business in and with the world's most populous nation. And of course, you will study the economic, demographic, cultural, and political factors and forces that define the Chinese business environment. One of the concerns that I had with Harvard case studies and a case study program was, would the cases be relevant and would they be current? As you can be, see by the list that I've provided here, things like China myths, China facts, and of course, if you followed the news within the last 16 months, you're most likely familiar with the challenges that Google has had in conducting business in China. During the program, we are fortunate to have wonderful guest speakers, and I'm sure you will as well. Our guest speakers included Mr. Jim Mai, who is an attorney specializing in Chinese law and specializing in uh, companies that are looking to do business in China. He is also the president of the Portland Suzhou Sister City Association. And while he joined us in, in the classroom, he was willing to answer questions relating to Chinese law, US law, business law, how the two differ, but most importantly, answer questions we had in regards to our pending travel and experience. Our second guest speaker was Mary Bergstrom. We conducted this interview or guest speaker through Skype as Mary is in Shanghai, China, where she operates the Bergstrom Group. The Bergstrom Group is a unique marketing consulting group that essentially, instead of just telling their clients about the consumers, tells their clients about the consumers through stories of the consumer. Finally, once you're done with eight weeks of MBA 587 and you have a foundation and understanding of China, you'll enter into MBA 588 International Consulting. Early in the term, you will work to get assigned to a consulting project Perhaps you'll work with other team members and form consulting teams for those projects. You'll begin to meet with the clients and of course sign non-disclosure agreements so that you can proceed with your consulting project. In late May and early June, participants fly to Shanghai and travel to Suzhou. And for approximately two weeks, you will reside on the Suzhou campus and each morning attend specialized classes taught in English by Chinese professors. In the afternoons, you will travel to the companies and work on your consulting projects. So the classes that we took at Suzhou University, abridged classes, covered topics such as finance and foreign investment, company law, Chinese culture and its influence on the economy, Chinese language, which was very interesting and fun, learning the Chinese language from a Chinese language instructor. And then finally, marketing in China, which is very unique. The project that I did was a SharePoint integration research project. Essentially, the project was to determine 
if the existing network infrastructure and bandwidth was capable of handling and transferring data to and from all locations, utilizing SharePoint and InfoPath. More importantly, it was a fact of the company wanted to know if SharePoint and InfoPath were the best solution for expanding current engineering operations between locations, sharing information, drawings, data. It was important and they felt that this would be the first point at which they implemented SharePoint because it provided the greatest return on investment. More importantly though, it was determining if SharePoint and its expansion throughout the organization should be the single point answer for creation of an intranet site in addition to a long-term solution for increasing communication throughout the entire organization. So some brief memories of my trip there. This is the dorm where I stayed. This is on campus, wonderful walks. More of the campus. This is our group participating in one of our classes. More architecture on the new campus. This is the old campus, which is actually connected to the new campus. This is the original clock tower. A place to sit and enjoy a rest on campus. Great sculptures all over campus. The new clock tower building, which is all lit up in the evening. Finally, the international building where you'll attend all your classes. And this is the original gate that housed Suzhou University. So let me end by saying xie xie, or thank you, and sai zhen, goodbye. <laughs>